everyone, this is Rachel and I'm here with another process video. Today I am doing a lot of mixed media and also using a bit of my uh, paper pack I have from Photo Play Paper called from the line Rhapsody. But we're going to go through, before I even touch Rhapsody, I'm going to go through a couple of different mixed media craziness. I have this stencil from The Ink Road, which is a independent stamp store in New York City. I visited it in April with some friends. And so it's supposed to be pavement, or not pavement, um, like a manhole cover design. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a bunch of different shimmers vibes and spraying them through the stencil. Now I didn't weight the stencil down and so they, it bleeds through, but I'm totally okay with that. I'm going for a messy, grungy look. The colors I went with, I started with Taupe of the Morning, then I hit hit it with uh, Don't Rain in My Parade, which is that navy color, Jenny B. Blue, which is the aqua, Quit Your Whining, and then Princess. Quit Your Whining is kind of like a burgundy-ish color, and then Princess is that purple. So once that's, uh, before I, before that was dry, I went ahead, I have this journal that at some point will become some sort of journal. Right now I'm just using it to take up my extra mixed media. So now what I'm doing is I am cutting strips of this paper from Rhapsody, a whole, all the different designs, multicolor and then tonal ones. So my idea is to put strips of it and then this is the We Are Memory Keepers dial trimmer. It puts a very slight uh, fancy cutting edge on different papers. In this particular one, I'm using the deckel edge. There's also a wave and a uh, scallop. It doesn't work super awesomely well. You need to go very slow. You need to put a lot of pressure into it. So I did cut away from that, as I did cut away from me cutting strips of paper. So what I'm going to do now is layer these strips of paper up and I know I said I was going to do a bunch of mixed media before I got to the paper. I forgot I pull out the paper first. I'm not done with the mixed media yet. Believe me, I went mixed media crazy on this particular layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up these strips. Right now it's on the bottom of the page. It's not going to end up. I'm going to turn it. Oh, I was super excited that I managed to cut the right amount of papers that I needed to cover that amount of space. I was like, woo, yay me. <laughs> so... I'm trying to decide what order I'm going to go in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up this bottom piece, but then I am not going to start gluing with that piece just so that way I'm thinking if for some reason I need to add more, I won't have to worry about. So what I do now is I ink up that second piece and now I'm going to go ahead and add some liquid glue to that and glue it to the third piece. And then I'm going to ink up the top of that third piece and glue it to the fourth piece. Although I'm going to cut away because it gets very repetitive of me inking, gluing, inking, gluing, so on and so forth. So now I've come back, everything is inked and glued together and we are happy as clams, yay! So I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece down because the reason I pulled out the paper was I want to do some, I know I'm going to do some more mixed media. I don't want this paper to get super buckly, so I'm going to add some gesso on top of it. I realize I've glued it too far and I've also forgotten to add liquid glue. Anytime I add gesso to my paper, and I had pre-gessoed this paper before we started, um, before we, before I started. <laughs> Join me on this journey and we will do some mixed media. <laughs> Anyway, I just did it before I started, but I knew I wanted to have some of the mixed media be on top of the pattern paper as well. So I wanted to be able to gesso it also. Now, I realized I missed a piece, that little floral piece over on the left hand side right now. So all I'm just going to do is ink that one up and I'm actually going to use that as my end piece rather than that aqua mintish color one. And I'm I'm actually happy I did that. I, In the scheme of things, no one else would probably notice except me, but it made me happy. So there you go.
All right, once I get this glued down, and I actually managed to glue it down straight, I just didn't manage to add enough glue. So, hey, if it's not one thing getting wrong, it's the other. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, I glued it down straight, but it won't stick. But ugh, glue, not enough glue. So I have this single photo that I'm using for my layout. And once I thought I was going to pick it up. Yeah, it's right there on the left hand side. So that's the photo I'm using. And we're all smiley and happy. And <laughs> the truth is we're kind of miserable. So the whole point of this layout being super grungy and messy and covered with mixed media and layers of papers and stuff like that is the subject of this layout is the fact that we went to New York City in July. We do not normally go to New York City in July. We're just not summer in the city type of people. And now that, sorry, I'm going to skip part of the story just to tell you now that gesso is dry. I've come back and I've pulled out my gelatos, which are not my favorite mixed media to use because they're really messy. Um, so, and I'm not a super messy lady, but for this particular reason, for this particular layout, I thought these would work well. I also pulled out these texture stamps. Some are from Bow Bunny and then the others are from I don't know. I just picked them up somewhere. They're from a company called Mandarin Duck. I have no clue. Uh, the Bow Bunny ones worked fabulously. The Mandarin Duck ones, not so much. Okay, so I'm going to take the gelatos. Okay, totally spaced on the word gelatos for a second. And basically what I'm going to do is create a color block for then to stamp on with my texture stamps. I just take a wet paper towel and wipe them. I prefer to use a baby wipe, but I was actually out of them at this particular time. So you're going to watch me do that. Uh, a rectangle down on the lower right hand side, and then this circle piece, I'm going to use two different colors for in a circular shape. <laughs> wow, words are really hard. And then also in the upper center portion, I'm going to do the same thing. So while you're watching me do that, I will finish my story. So as I was saying, we, were, we went to New York City in July. We went for a specific reason to visit a museum for a school project, a summer school project for my nephew. I had a Metro card with like eight bucks left on it. And I'm like, oh, we should just use that up because I don't know when we'll be back and I don't want it to run out because it's a whole, you know, it's eight bucks. I'm cheap. Um, forgetting we don't usually go in July because it's hot and it's stinky and the subway smells and is gross in July. And we're there and we're like, this was stupid. We should have just taken an Uber or a cab. We are miserable. It is crowded like crazy. It was 4th of July weekend. It was the only weekend we could go. It was just a bad idea all around to go down in the subway system. <laughs> so um, the whole point of this is that it was kind of gross and we were all sweaty and we were we were done with being under underground. So that's the whole purpose of this layout. So I wanted it to be messy and grungy and layery and just kind all kinds of mess. Okay, for the circular portion of the gelatos, I used a red and then a pink. And then for that upper portion, I used like a real true blue. And then I also used a corally pink. Now, oh, you know what? In my Misting the Being, I forgot, I did use a blue as well. That blue is called Blue Jeans as part of the Shimmers vibes. I forgot that. Okay. So the ink I'm using is Ranger Dye Ink. It's a permanent ink, so it was it would work on top of these uh, gelatos, and they were it works really well. Except I didn't put enough pressure, forgetting that the layers of paper are much higher than the base of cardstock. So here's where now this is why I know it was the stamp and not me, because I didn't mind if it was a wee bit smudgy. So I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a lot. Of pressure on here so I put a lot of pressure you can see I even yeah and I'm like that didn't stamp at all so I'm thinking well maybe I didn't put enough ink on and I'm like you know what I don't even care if I've got it a little off I've got this little um, 
Amy Tangerine pad that you're supposed to use for stitching that I never use. So I'm like, I'll do that. So I, I, I press down, then I flip it over, I press it, and then I realize, oh crud, I never cut off the branding strip. So this is going to be larger than 12 by 12. It's no big deal. I'm just going to trim off on the opposite side, not the side with the pattern papers, but the side where that circle is. No big deal. So I'm super unhappy with the way that is, but I can't really do anything about it, and I'm not going to flip out over it. So it just it is the way it is. You can sort of see it, especially in real life. It's not as good here, but in real life it's fine. So now I've got that third texture rectangle, or second rectangle, but third texture piece, and I'm going to use that on the upper part. And like I said, the Bow Bunny ones stamped beautifully. I was super pleased, especially with that top one. I'm not supremely happy with the color of aqua blue on the bottom one. I am going to take care of that in a little bit. But for right now, I'm contemplating it in real life. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this paper off so it actually is 12 by 12. And I think I'm going to move on to my photo now. Yes. So I take this uh, large patterned pattern paper. I know I'm not going to use it as a full background. So I figure, you know what? It'll make a pretty cute layer. So it does. I'm going to go ahead and just make a very small mat with it. And then once I see that, I put it on top of the piece I cut off. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, that would actually make, oh, see, here's where I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm really unhappy with the way this color is. So I decide I have a white gelato and I'm going to take it and put it over. And then I take once again, the damp paper towel and I just wipe it down. Now, my original plan was to color a lighter blue over it, but in doing that with the white one, I'm perfectly happy with the color that is now. So I'm just going to once again, take the stamp that I originally used. It's kind of like a messy, messy crosshatch. And I just put another layer down and it looks fabulous to me. I'm super happy. So now I see, I'm like, oh look, that looks absolutely perfect. So I'm just going to layer that dark blue medallion piece behind my layout. But I am first going to ink up my photo, my photo mat and this paper behind it. I don't remember. I either used hickory smoke or black soot. Those are my go-to colors from the Ranger Distress inks. And once I ink both of those up, I'm going to layer them and be super happy with the way that turned out. I pull out my Scotch foam tape and that is what I'm going to use anytime I use a lot of mixed media. I find the foam tape really works well to make my photos stick. Either that or I try to use both ATG and liquid glue and it's just a way um, to help make it adhere better. So I'm pulling out a bunch of things I've pulled from my stash to work with this paper line. The stickers came from the Rhapsody line. The rest just comes from my stash. So you are going to miss a little bit of this. I apparently turned off the camera and did not realize, but it's nothing major. Um, it's just a couple of little embellishments that you miss. While I was looking for those embellishments, I found some scraps in the Rhapsody collection pack and I'm just going to layer those together and put them on the left hand side of my photo along with that other larger piece of medallion paper. So once I get that, my photo block is complete, so yay. And I'm just going to pull off my foam tape sticky the sticky part and place that down and I'm happy with the way that looks. I'm going to start with the stickers from the Rhapsody line and as I mentioned with all of this mixed media even though they're stickers I am going to add some liquid glue to all of them because they have a hard time sticking. I use a couple of those lanterns and those are just for shape form not specifically lanterns. I also grab that really pretty camera and then this sticker, these stickers are from Webster's Pages, but I got them at Joann's. It's, it's part of their planner section. So I pull out on the left-hand side that little sticker that says, Say Yes to New Adventures, although with this particular one, we should have said no. And then that other one says, If you stumble, make it part of the dance. And I thought that was just kind of tongue-in-cheek funny. And I'm looking for a couple more just to layer behind. I pull out this little 
medallion-y piece and tuck that behind over on the left hand side. I also cut another medallion piece in half and put that at the top and the bottom where that blue piece of paper ends just to kind of soften that edge there. Now I have skipped forward. That's the part you missed. What you missed was me adding two wood veneer butterflies and then also those epoxy arrows. And you also missed me digging through a bag of freckled fawn wood veneer. Believe me, that is the part you do not miss <laughs> because that took forever. I will not lie. So I'm going to use that wood veneer and then I'm going to use these Ellie stamps in uh, the stamp set is called Jordan to do this one word terrible. You may have seen me pull out an A before I stamped it. I remember that terrible does not have an A in it. It has an I. So thank heavens for that. For the next part of my title, I'm also going to be going to some Ellie Studio stamps. These are the mini tile stamps that come as part of the stamp builder set so i'm going to stamp the word made in that and then i'm going to pull out these thickers and oh sugar they are afterglow or bright or something oh first i'm going to clean off my stamps using my lawn fawn stamp cleaner thingy bright okay so sorry the thickers i'm using are called bright and i'm just going to put together the word weave so my entire title is going to be we've made a terrible mistake <laughs> because that is what we thought about two minutes after heading down into the subway we're like okay this was a bad idea <laughs> now you're not going to see me do my journaling on camera because i could not find my pen that can write over gesso. I do it afterwards and it's going to go right under the word mistake. Um, but I basically told you exactly what I told you at the beginning about, you know, realizing pretty much right away that was a bad idea. All right, so I've glued down all of my wood veneers and now I'm adding a couple of little square stickers from those Webster pages, a uh, little card stock sticker sheet. Uh, a little heart in the upper right hand corner, a little globe in the over on the left hand center part, and then a little chevron arrow down by the title. The last thing I'm going to do is finish off with some mist because it's not dirty and grungy enough. I've got to add some black shimmers uh, in after dark, before dark, something like that. I can never remember. All right, folks, I am all done. Thanks so much for joining me here. If you could flick me a thumbs up, that would be super great. Bye, everyone.